Hey, Isabella. I just heard from my husband that it looks like it's finally growing. Uh, yeah, that's right. But maybe a different choice of words? Oh, uh, sorry about that. I'm just concerned, you know. You're not getting any younger. How are you feeling? The stable period has passed quite a bit. It's been six months, and both the health and growth are going smoothly. Well, congratulations. After six months, things might be more settled, huh? And since you like kids, you must be excited, right? Yeah, I'm excited. But I'm also a bit worried if I'll be a good mom. I get it. I've had four. But aiming to be a good mom can be tiring. So it's good to take it easy. Thank you. First, I hope for a safe delivery. That's right. My kids get a cousin to play with next time. Why did you leave the barbecue party early today? Oh, well, I got a bit tired and my stomach started to feel bloated. You're tired? You weren't even doing anything. It's her in-law's party. Everyone was being nice to you just because you're pregnant. Meanwhile, everyone keeps asking me to do things myself. I'm the one who should be tired. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Is there anything I can do for you? Oh, well, you left without saying anything. My youngest was still asleep when you left, right? It was tough when she woke up and you weren't there. Huh? You promised her something, right? Oh, yeah. I told her we're going to go play next time. Yeah. She thought you were going to play with her today, so she was crying. I'm sorry, I didn't mean today. It's not okay to plan like that. You're going to be a mom soon, right? Being a mom will make you realize how important it is to keep promises with children. It's not just about rules. It's about teaching them the value of keeping their word. How can you expect them to keep their promises if you don't keep yours? You're right. I apologize about that. I'll be careful next time. Please do. You should worry. What? You're about to have your own child, so you better fix that. I think I'll be fine. I have been doing my own research about parenting. Don't be shy to ask me about parenting. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, thank you. I feel better now. I'm sorry you have to go to my parents by yourself. It's okay. I started feeling uncomfortable in my stomach while watching the kids, so I got worried and decided to head home. Did she ask you to babysit again? I already told my brother about that. It was just Emma too. Your brother didn't come. Really? I'm sorry. Well, there weren't many adults around, so I had no choice. But what's more concerning is that Emma started talking about helping me get ready to be a mom. What? She's not a bad person, I guess. It's just the way she talks to people is kind of off. But let me know if there's anything I can help with. Thank you. Have a good day at work. I'll work hard for you and our baby. Good morning. Are you up? Are you being lazy because you're pregnant? Good morning. I'm up and making breakfast. What's up with you this early? Wow. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything is fine. So, you're about to have your baby, huh? Are you excited? I am. I've been preparing everything and enjoying my maternity life. You've always wanted a baby, right? Becoming a mother has always been my dream. Well, I love kids. When our family gets together, you always look after my kids. You're really good with kids. I wonder how you can manage to play for a while. Don't you think it's tiring? Well, I guess I know how to play with them. 
I'm the eldest among my siblings, too. You're good at babysitting. Also, I came up with a good idea to help you prepare to be a mom. What is it? Can you watch my kids today? We need to go out suddenly. We wish we could take them, but it's not a place they can come with us. I want to help, but taking care of four kids, especially with my condition, might be tough. What about your mother-in-law or someone else? Even if you're in your last month of pregnancy, you can still babysit, right? But mother-in-law has a hospital appointment today. She's been feeling tired lately, so she might not be up for it. She's been turning me down lately. I'm just concerned. With this big belly, it's not easy to move quickly if something happens. Don't worry. My kids are girls. They're not like boys running around causing chaos so you can relax. They won't be a burden for you being pregnant. I don't know. My kids are well-behaved and understanding. And being pregnant doesn't mean you can't handle them. If you keep saying you can't manage, having another child might just stay a dream. This could be a good practice for you, you know. And I could use a break once in a while too. See? I'm being reasonable, right? I guess. Fine then. Yay! Thank you! What time are you planning to come home? I'll be home by 7 p.m. Oh, can't you come back home sooner? And make sure they have their dinner too. Giving them a bath would be helpful too. Huh? Bath time too? I'm a bit worried about the bath, to be honest. Oh? The older ones can bathe themselves, and the little one doesn't need to be held, so it's okay. Where's your husband? My husband's been swamped with work lately, so he's been getting home really late, usually after 11.30 p.m. So I've been doing everything by myself. Watching over all four of them, you know? All four of them! I see. Thanks to that, I don't get any time for myself at all. It's not just about errands. I just need a little time for myself too. That must be tough. Yeah, you know how it is. Taking care of someone else's kids is easy. But when they're your own, it's really a handful. Experiencing it before having your own is a good thing, don't you think? And hey, since you'll have kids someday too... Let's help each other out, okay? Help each other out, huh? Please come back home as soon as you can. Wait, what's going on? I opened the door and your kids were standing there. I forgot they don't have school today. But since I had plans, I just dropped them off. Are you serious? I just watched them the other day. Well... I've been really busy lately. I can't cancel my plans, so can you please watch them? At least let me know in advance. What if something happens? I'm sorry. You're so kind worrying about the kids. This is just too much. You're just resting until the baby comes, right? You're not planning to go out with that big belly, are you? I'll be at home, but there's a lot to prepare for the birth. It's not like it's a big plan anyway. Please don't jump to conclusions. So tell me, what plans did you have? My friend was supposed to come visit today, but I had to cancel it because of you. See? It's not even that important. It is for me. I haven't seen my friend since they moved away after getting married. They're coming back home today, so meeting them is a big deal for me. It's not really up to someone else to decide if it's important or not. You're the one asking for a favor. Why are you acting like that? Why is it such a big deal to meet your friend? What if something happens while you're out? Moms get criticized for wanting just one day off. I didn't mean to complain. I was just saying it's inconvenient for me today. That's how it goes. A mom's schedule is all about the kids' health and plans. 
You can't think that you're spoiled or else it's going to mess with your head. Today was a practice in having to change plans when necessary, right? I understand, but there's no need to be aggressive about it. I just wanted to talk to my friends in person. Isn't FaceTime enough for that? Family is more important than friends. Don't you like my kids? I do like them, but your kids are a little out of hand. It's just too much for me. But my kids don't run around or cause trouble, you know? They might not run wild, but they do sneaky stuff like hiding in the bathroom and locking the door or raiding the fridge without asking. They tend to do risky things like that, so I have to keep a close eye on them and constantly chase after them. They're just playing around. It's not cute at all. If things go wrong, it could lead to a serious accident. No matter how many times I try to stop them, they keep repeating the same things. It's really tough because your kids never listen. Oh, come on. They're kids. We just have to patiently teach them. That's just how parenting goes. It's not that. You'll become a mother too, so learn the challenges of parenting. Taking care of my daughters should be a learning experience for you. I can start learning that once the baby is born. Right now, it's an important time, so resting is also necessary. Was there something wrong? It's not that. Then I don't see the problem. You have to move your body at least. It'll be a good exercise to watch the kids. Isabella! Please watch the kids today, too. Having a babysitter is a huge help. <laughs> Guess what? I brought some snacks today, too. From that shop you liked before, remember? So you watch them, right? What? I'm at the hospital right now. What? I'm in the hospital now, so I can't. Since when? I've been here since last night. I had a stomach ache and rushed to the hospital and ended up being admitted. But it's not your due date yet, right? Right now, we're still waiting to see if the baby will arrive. But there were a lot of things I couldn't do at home to rest, so I decided to stay in the hospital. It might be because of stress and fatigue. I got tired from being asked to take care of the kids. Whoa, that's kind of rude. Wait. Does that mean there's nobody at home right now? Seriously? No one is home. My husband's off to work. He'll leave work early to come here. No one is going to be there, so nobody's going to look after your kids. Are you kidding me? What am I going to do then? Huh? What do you mean? I dropped off the kids at your house earlier. What? You're kidding, right? I'm serious. I thought you can watch them again today. How could you leave them without making sure anyone was there? Especially when there are little ones around. Are you out of your mind? I didn't mention it earlier because I thought you might say no. Since it worked out last time, I figured I'd just go ahead and do it today. Hurry back home. With four kids around, especially the little ones, it's not safe out there. You don't have to tell me. I'm turning back around. I'll also contact your husband just in case, so hurry up. There's no need to do that. I'll find them. Are the kids okay? Did you find all of them? The youngest one isn't there. Since you didn't come around, they assumed you were in the yard. But then, they realized she was missing. They were just about to start looking when I came. What? Where could she be? I've looked around and asked the neighbors, but no one has seen her. She seems to be enjoying walking so much that she wanders off. Remember when she almost got hit by a car the other day? Do you have any idea where she might be? There's a park nearby, so I took her there the other day because she was being too loud. But it's quite far for her, you know? I think it's the park I saw earlier. With a big slide, right? She wasn't there. Any other places nearby where kids might go? 
Maybe the kindergarten nearby? We've peeked in there during walks before. The kindergarten? I'll look there. I've already let your husband know that we couldn't find the child. He's worried, so he's leaving work early to come your way. And I'll also inform the police, so don't worry. Police? Why would you do something like that? It's not that serious. But isn't that what we should do? Since the child is missing, we need to find them quickly, so the more hands the better, right? Or is there something else bothering you? Isn't the child the most important thing? But I don't want to make a big deal out of it. It's just a lost child, so reporting it is unnecessary exaggeration. Don't you think it's already a serious situation? Can you handle the responsibility if something happens to the kids? It's better to get help from the police to find them quickly. In this world, not everyone is good, right? There's no need to involve the police. I can find her myself. But you still haven't found her. Just tell me more places around where kids might go. Where do you think she went? You were supposed to be looking after them, so you should know, right? Even if you say so, if you claim you can find her yourself, then don't rely on me. Whatever, just help me. This town has marshes and rivers, you know? Maybe she went there? I'm even more worried because it's raining today. Marshes? Why is there something dangerous like that nearby? This town is known for its abundant nature. Marshes and rivers aren't too far off, though it's a bit of a hike. But seriously, kids trekking there on their own? Sounds a bit wild, doesn't it? I shouldn't have left them in a place like this in the first place. And seriously? Why aren't you home at such times like this? Talk about bad timing. Don't try to shift the blame onto me. It's your fault, isn't it? Deep down, you know it too. Leaving the kids behind was just irresponsible. Shut up! Who do you think you are to talk to me like that? The problem is that you kept dumping babysitting duties on me, right? I said no, but you insisted and left them with me anyway. That's why things turned out like this. Because you made it seem like it was okay to do it. I thought it would be a good learning experience for you. It's like a practice session for parenting, right? I didn't ask for any of that and I said no, didn't I? Just admit that you used me. Stop blaming me. This isn't the time for that. I need to find my kid right now. Where are you? Shut up. If you're not going to help and just blame me, save it for later. I've been running around searching this whole time. I care about my kids too. What if something happens to her? I just got a call from your husband saying he found her. He couldn't reach you, so he asked me to contact you. Really? Is she okay? Where was she? Apparently, she was in the marsh. She said she heard there's some legendary creature living there. What? She went there? It turns out there was a watch patrol passing by at just the right time. Talk about perfect timing. Huh? What do you mean? She was trying to climb over the fence. She said she saw something. Maybe just a reflection or something. It's kind of weird, considering there aren't any creatures there. Is it deep? It's not just deep. It's the kind of marsh where you sink in if you step into it. Well, can't you tell just by looking how dangerous it is? How old do you think your kid is? She's only three. How can she tell? You're clearly in the wrong for leaving them alone. And by the way, your husband is really mad. He's not okay with the kids being in danger. You might want to start getting ready for a breakup. He's mad? Yeah, he's totally blown his fuse. He's going off about raising the kids on his own from now on. He's saying he doesn't need a mother like you. He's really going to cut me off? Just because of one mistake? One mistake, huh? 
seems like your husband's fixated on why the kids end up in danger this time around. Why? You never told him you were leaving them with me, did you? Well, he seemed to have noticed and was trying to find out why you were leaving them. Huh? What do you mean? You love being on social media, right? Have you seen it on your page? I've been busy looking for her. I don't have time for that. Somebody was taking a video of your kid getting rescued. And because it was already a marsh rumored to have a legendary creature, it's blowing up on social media. What? So you're saying everyone knows that she went missing? Seems like there are comments asking what the mother was doing. No way! Everyone is criticizing me? Well, it seems like they're not exposing your account or anything. Weren't you making contents about a big family or something? Well, even though you can't see who's behind it online, your relatives are the ones criticizing you the most. And there's one big point everyone's curious about. Where were you when you were supposed to be looking after the kids? That doesn't matter right now. Yes, it does. That's the reason why your husband is mad. Is it something you can't explain? Are you having an affair or something? That's not funny. Why would I do that? Stop making things up. I won't do such a thing. Then why didn't you tell your husband about your plans? You don't have the right to tell me anything about helping me out. You just dumped your responsibility to me for your own sake. You even told your kids not to tell their dad about you going out, right? It's complicated when you have kids. Your kids are scared about what happened. They told their dad about those days you were leaving them. Everything? I don't care what you do, but involving your children is just wrong. You've been sneaking around because you're doing something wrong, right? I wasn't cheating. I won't do anything like that. Then who's the uncle your kids are talking about? I think you should tell the truth. It's not cheating, but I was meeting up with someone. Someone? Is it a man? Yes, but nothing happened between us. He was just one of my followers. It wasn't something like cheating. A follower? I never went out with him like that. We just hang out at a cafe and chat about my content. He's an aspiring video editor, and I'm just trying to support him. So I treat him to meals and buy stuff to help him out? Did you always pay for everything? Yeah. So you were going out there being a sugar mommy. But if there's no physical intimacy, it's not considered cheating, right? That's okay, isn't it? Everyone has their own definition of cheating. And some people wouldn't forgive even just going to hang out. Plus, wasn't that money your husband earned? Even the nicest husband wouldn't let that slide, right? You just made everything worse. How much did you use on this guy? About $1,000? Are you sure that's it? I'm sure he's going to check the bank statement and everything. I'm sorry, it's actually $40,000. Whoa! What the hell, Emma? Are you out of your mind? Can you do me a favor? If my husband accuses me, will you stand up for me? For what? Why would I do that for you? We're both moms, aren't we? Come on, have my back. You'd understand if you've looked after my kids, right? Taking care of all of them alone is tough. I needed a break. Wanted a bit of freedom, you know? No way. You hurt your own children. You're mad about me dumping the kids on you, huh? I'm sorry about that. Now you can take all the breaks you need, huh? Lucky you. The kids were getting on your nerves, right? I didn't mean it that way. You'll have plenty of free time now. After all... You'll be living alone from now on and working all by yourself. Sure enough, 
My sister-in-law and her husband ended up divorcing. My husband's brother thought that he can't trust her with his kids after what happened. She used all of their savings for the kids. He ended up getting custody of the kids and moving back to the family home. He felt bad for leaving all the work on her, but what she did was unforgivable. He asked for a transfer to a different department so he can work from home. His parents are helping him out with the kids. Now that my baby's a bit older, I try to visit my in-laws more often since we live nearby. All four girls are a handful, but with me having a daughter too, they take care of her like she's a little princess, which is really sweet. On the other hand, Emma got nothing from the divorce and ended up in jail for neglecting her kids. After the divorce, it seems the guy in question bailed on her too. It seems like he didn't want nothing to do with the trouble. She tried to get compensation for emotional distress, but the guy turned the tables and accused her of stalking. He claimed she gave him money for no reason. Emma ended up with nothing, which made her depressed. Even though she started working to survive, she couldn't manage many days. She ended up in debt. My sister-in-law lost everything, her family, money, and even her mental health. It's a sad ending, all because of her choices. Maybe one day I'll understand how she felt raising my own, but I doubt I'll ever understand her actions. I'll just focus on protecting my husband's and this innocent little baby's smile. How was this month, Estella? I'm hoping for good news. To be honest, I'd like to hear from you before I ask you like this. Well, I don't care either way at this point as long as you give me good news. Good morning, Phoebe. What are you talking about? What do you mean by good news? Stop fooling me around. I was asking if you're pregnant or not. Um, as I told you before, I understand that you're looking forward to it. But me and Jared will decide on the matter together. So for now, could you please watch over us? That's why I'm watching over you like this. I'm not your enemy. What's wrong with me watching over you every month and waiting for you to give me the good news? Because I want to know as soon as possible. It's my first grandchild. I'm going to be a grandmother, remember? Of course, I can't wait to hear that you're pregnant. I understand your feelings, but we have our own ideas and our own pace. And I don't want you to put pressure on me and Jared. I'm not trying to be mean, Estela. I'm just looking forward to it. I'd prefer a boy if possible, but I'm okay with a girl at first. They said that it's better to have a girl first. Anyway, I'll babysit your child, so don't worry about that. Phoebe, I think you're expecting that too soon. We won't know the sex until I get pregnant. Besides, whether or not we'll have two kids, we haven't decided about that yet. You're still 25. You can easily have two kids, can't you? Do it while you're still young. With Jared's salary, you should have no financial problems. So what are you waiting for? You have nothing to worry about. It's going to be the first child for both of us. That's why I want to talk it over with my husband and make a careful decision. You're a bit too optimistic, aren't you? You've been married for a year now, so I think it's time to get pregnant with your first child. Excuse me for cutting this conversation, but I need to go out right now, so let me stop here for now. Oh, I see. I still have a lot more to say to you. Anyway, let's have a proper discussion later then. With Jared's participation, of course. We'll have a long talk then, and you won't be able to escape. Oh my, what are you going to do with such passivity? Now that you're married, you have to be more proactive. You were trying to surprise me, weren't you? If so, it was a big success. But if you're pregnant, you better tell me. What? No, I don't have any good news for you yet. Oh my God, our neighbor, Miss Adams, saw you go into the obstetrics and gynecology clinic. Don't hide it. Tell me, you're pregnant, aren't you? Well, obstetrics and gynecology is a place for non-pregnant women as well. I hate to say it, but that's a misunderstanding. I don't want you to make assumptions based on eyewitness information alone. 
What? Then what is it? I'm sorry. I'll switch with Jared. Estella, I'm not finished talking with you. Say it from your mouth. Mother, it's me, Jared. Estella and I were just having an important conversation. Don't worry. She's sitting next to me. But since you're being so forceful, it seemed better if I spoke first. So we switched. Oh, no. Something serious? I'm getting nervous here. Actually, we're in the middle of fertility treatment. Oh, really? I didn't know that. So that means Estella is infertile. Oh, my God. That's terrible. Why did you marry such a person, Jared? What should we do then? Oh, now I finally understood the situation. That's why Estella only responded negatively whenever I mentioned about pregnancy. Surely it's not a good conversation topic for her. Enough is enough. This is such a waste of time. I don't want to wait any longer. Why don't you two just get a divorce? Don't be hasty. We're still in the middle of a conversation. Estella isn't the one who's infertile. Me too. Did I make myself clear to you, mother? Let me say it once again. I'm also infertile. What? You too? No way. I'm supposed to have given birth to a perfect son. Me and Estella wanted to know before we got married. So we both got tested, just to be sure. And the results showed that we both had a little bit of a problem. Well, we were told that fertility treatments would help, so we're working on it. I didn't know anything about that. Since when? When will you two get better? I don't want you to worry. If I told you, you'd be all over me, wouldn't you, mom? I decided to give it a go for two years. And if I don't see any results, I'll let you know. But Estella was asking me for advice on various things. She confided in me that she was having a hard time emotionally because you kept asking her about the pregnancy. I realized that not talking to you as early as possible was counterproductive. I was going to go over there tomorrow after work and explain everything to you. But as you can see, you're putting pressure on my wife again, so... It's hard to believe that you're infertile too! It's true. I'm getting proper treatment now. I just want you to shut up for a while and let us go at our own pace. Will you watch over us? The longer I watch over you, the older Estella will get. I still think it would be faster to get a divorce. What? Why? It's a matter of probability. It can't be helped that you're infertile. You'd better remarry a woman who isn't infertile then. Even if you're going to continue fertility treatment, I think it would be better to get married to a fertile woman. I think the chance of that woman to get pregnant will be much better than Estella. Leave it to me. I can introduce you to a young girl. I just need to have that girl take a fertility test first. Mom. Jared, you should do that. Don't let your feelings take over your rational mind. You need to think about the future. Are you serious? Do you even know what you're saying? Of course I do. I'm serious. My grandchildren is the top priority. I want to hold my grandchild in my arms as soon as possible. Do you understand me? I understand. Well, that's good. That's my son. You're so smart. Then, I'll proceed with the blind date right away. You go ahead with the divorce with Estella as soon as possible. Divorce is out of the question. My wife is not a child-producing machine. I'm not leaving my wife for a woman I don't even know just for your sake. That's impossible. What's wrong with you, Jared? You shouldn't speak like that to your mother. Are you really my mom who gave birth to me? Jared, what's the matter? Don't you ever think about how you would feel if someone said the same thing to you? Huh? But I wasn't infertile. That's not what I'm saying. The feeling of wanting to conceive a child of someone you love. You understand that, don't you? Estella wants to, but she can't yet. That's enough. I'm not going home anymore. What? Jared? When we have a baby, I'll never let you see him or her in person. Why are you so angry? You don't have to go that far. I'm blocking you and Estella's doing the same thing, so there's no point in contacting us. Hey, Jared, wait! When my husband reported this incident to his father, he was very angry and scolded Phoebe for her lack of delicacy. 
a month later, my husband's request for a transfer was approved and we decided to move. In addition, the good news continued and thanks to the fertility treatment, I got pregnant. After spending 10 months and 10 days without incident, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy. However, I did not tell my mother-in-law about this. Perhaps she may have heard about it through rumors. Apparently, she has a knot in her head that she thinks that as long as she has a grandson, she can go back to her former relationship. My father-in-law kindly suggested to keep it as a secret because it seems that my mother-in-law doesn't understand that she is the main cause of the problem. My father-in-law sometimes sneaks out to the baby, though it is an hour and a half drive from his house. It will be a little while before my mother-in-law will be able to hold her grandchild in her arms. Kelly, where are you? Are you playing on the computer in your room again? You must be in a good mood playing all day long. You're a housewife. Don't skip house chores. Your dear husband is working hard outside. Oh, Lavender, I'm not playing games. Um, I'm not at home today. What? Don't tell me you used the spare key to get in again. It's terrible to enter an unattended house without permission. Eddie should have taken that key away from you. How did you get in? It's easy. I just made another key. When did you do that? Even so, I don't think you're allowed to do that. That's not a big problem. It doesn't matter. What on earth are you doing out on a weekday afternoon? You're hiding something, aren't you? You're not having an affair, are you? There's nothing but suspicion. Of course I'm not having an affair. Looks like you've been watching too much drama, Lavender. I'm sorry, but I can't keep texting you. I'm standing on the side of the road and I have an urgent matter to do. Can we talk later? Huh? Even though I still have some more things to tell you? How rude! I really need to go. I'm sorry, but it's about time. I don't have much time. Oh, please don't go into my workroom without permission. I don't want anyone touching anything there. It's locked, but just in case, you could pry it open. Wait, Kelly! I still need to talk to you. Excuse me, Lavender. I'll see you later. Kelly, are you there? I have an important thing to tell you. Good evening, Lavender. What is it this time? You're so impatient, aren't you? I'll get straight to the point. From today on, you're going to live with me. No excuses. You have no choice. What? Why so sudden? You can't just decide something like that on your own. You can't hide it from me. I know. You've been told at the hospital that you're dying, haven't you? I heard about that. What? Me? Dying? Where did you get that from? I heard you have three months to live. Poor unfortunate girl. You know your own life expectancy and yet you got married to my son? It's totally a scam. It's against the common sense. You should have told us before getting married to my son. Looks like my son got married to a woman with a time bomb. Where in the world did you hear about that? You can't fool me. You were at the hospital yesterday. Oh, yes. I just went to visit a friend in the hospital. You're lying. Do you have any friends? You are such an outrageous wife. I'd really like my son to divorce you right now, but it wouldn't be right for the world to see me kicking out my son's wife who's been told that she's dying. But you know, even if you just let me deal with you every day like this, your crime of deceiving and marrying Eddie isn't right. I'll let you atone for your sins. Isn't that a good idea? For the remaining time of your three months to live, you must devote yourself to me. I'll have you move in with me starting today. This is no time for leisurely recuperation. I'm not going to put you in the hospital. Well, since you said that so suddenly, it's hard to give you an immediate answer. You must decide right away. Your time is short. Eddie? Are you still at work? Do you have a minute? I'm in a bit of trouble. Hey, what's up? I don't understand how it happened, but your mother has been saying some strange things to me. What? Somehow, I have a bad feeling about this. Are you okay? Don't be surprised of what I'm gonna tell you now, okay? She told me that I have only three months to live, and in order to devote the three months I have left, 
She's asked me to move in with her and take care of her starting today. Huh? I don't think this is something funny. What do you mean by moving in with my mother and taking care of her? Kelly, you just had your health check last month and was told that you are super healthy. I don't think a person as healthy as you has only three months to live. It's just like that. Funny, isn't it? Becoming some sort of slave for your mother for three months? It doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, could it be that thing? Yes, I was thinking about the same thing. Maybe that's it. Maybe she came into our house without my permission again and was listening to that while I was in my workroom. I see. Trespassing again. And now she's being paranoid. Oh, gosh. So, what should we do? Do we have to execute that plan? I think it's the right time to execute that plan since we're well prepared. Well then, looks like the mission has started. Roger. See you later then. Kelly, you're always late for everything, aren't you? I haven't received your reply. How long are you going to make me wait? Sorry to have kept you waiting, Lavender. I got a call from someone I know. Hang up the phone right now. Such a phone call. I don't have the whole day for you. So, what's your reply? Okay, I won't be hospitalized. Good. You're being awfully nice. I'll have you work for me every day. You don't have time to get sick. I'll take care of it, but I'll need some time to move in. What? For what? Hurry up! I need to prepare a change of clothes and other personal items. Are you asking me to move in with just the clothes I'm wearing on right now? Your neighbors spread a bad rumor about you if you live with your daughter-in-law who wears the same clothes every day and don't change, right? That's indeed a problem. I have to be considered as a nice person by my neighbors. I know, right? So please give me three days. I'll do my best to get ready. I won't embarrass you, Lavender. Also, you have some allergies, right? I'm sure that the house will be covered in dust during this period. You will definitely have a hard time with sneezing and runny nose if I don't clean the house. I definitely don't think it would be a good idea for you to come quickly. I don't have a choice. I don't like dust. So I'll wait until you're ready. Well, three days will do. No more than that. Kelly, today's the third day. I'm sure you're ready to go. You should be the one who need to let me know about this before I send you this message. It's already evening, so get your ass over here. Stalling for time won't help. I've left a lot of chores for you to do. If you don't come soon, you'll just get busier. There's a lot of trash all over the house. I'm leaving it all out so that you can have a rewarding time cleaning them. I need you to clean the bathroom and I need you to wipe the windows and then clean the front door. Cleaning front door and the bathroom are the basic chores. And for starters, I need you to make dinner for tonight. I'm starving, so please make it really quick. Before that, I need you to wash the dishes for the next three days. So, you'll have less time than you think. Oh, and you'll need to buy some groceries too. I want you to make me a steak dinner tonight with the finest beef to celebrate the start of our new life together. Of course, you will pay for all of it. You only have three months to live anyway. So, what's the point of leaving money behind? Spend all your money on me before you go to heaven. Hello, Lavender. Sorry for the delay in getting back to you. Me and Eddie have arrived at a new place around mid-afternoon. Gosh, what a busy day. What? You're already here? How come I don't see you guys? We're in the middle of unpacking, but we're doing our best. I've been so busy with work that I haven't been able to catch up on cleaning up. I'm working on my computer right now. By the way, we're planning to have Chinese food delivered for dinner tonight. Huh? What are you talking about? I haven't received any of your belongings, and you yourself aren't here yet. Where are you now? Have you gone crazy from the shock of being told that you only have a few months to live? Are you being delusional? Are you okay, Kelly? <coughs> Kelly! Yes, Lavender, what's wrong? I'm busy, you see. I told you, didn't I? Where are you? I'll have you explain it to me properly. I thought you were just being paranoid and you didn't want to live with me, so I came to pick you up. 
There's no one in the house. The family next door told me that you moved out this morning. I told you, didn't I? I'm not being paranoid. My brain is still working well. Anyway, me and Eddie finished the move by mid-afternoon. What are you talking about? You think you can just run away like that after what you did? You agreed to move in with me. You said you would live with me, not to be hospitalized. I listened carefully to what you've told me. You know that. Are you being paranoid, Lavender? I told you that I won't be hospitalized, but I don't remember agreeing to live together with you. I never agreed to move in with you. In the first place, I wasn't told by the doctor that I was dying. I'm in perfect health. Huh? No way! That can't be true! I heard that with my own ears. It's useless for you to hide the fact about that. Lavender, you came to my house without permission again and listened to me from the front door of my workroom. That's when you heard someone talking about me having just three months to live, right? I can't think of anything else. That's right! You can't get away with it because I heard it correctly. I definitely heard him say that you only have three months to live. It sounded like you were talking by using online meeting apps or something. That must have been the doctor or nurse talking to you. Lavender, that's a scenario. You misunderstood because you eavesdropped halfway through the conversation. Huh? Scenario? What do you mean? It involves work, so I can't go into the details even for your sake. You know that Eddie is a scenario writer, right? And that he rents an apartment for work? Uh, yes, of course. Eddie works hard every day, unlike you. He's sensitive, you know. He says it's hard for him to concentrate when he works from home. He's been working that way since he was single and when he was still living at the family home. Yes, and that hasn't changed even now that he's married and living with me. In contrast, I used the other room as my workroom. I don't know how much you understand that. You came without an appointment to interrupt my work, either on purpose or by accident, aiming for the time when I'm alone during the day. Huh? Does that matter still bother you? You're living like a parasite and just pretending to be a housewife. I don't think that you're working. It seems like you don't know anything. It's true, isn't it? You're just staying in your room playing video games or something anyway, aren't you? If you've seen your son who went on to become a scenario writer from home, you know that you can make enough money from home, don't you? When it comes to my case, who is his wife, you instantly don't understand the matter. Is that intentional? Don't you realize that what you are saying is full of contradictions? What? That's rude! Who do you think you are that you're allowed to talk like that to me? I don't think I can get you to listen to me, so Eddie said that he would explain to you. You guys can talk to each other now. Wait! Kelly! Hi, Mom. I'll take over from here, so listen carefully. Eddie, explain to me in detail so I can understand. What on earth is going on? Kelly, who was supposed to have only three months to live, is actually in good health. Well, she certainly looks healthy, doesn't she? But I definitely heard the voice saying about her life expectancy from her room, and it sounded so serious. Kelly told me earlier that you were eavesdropping. That was the scenario I wrote. Huh? I wrote the scenario about a woman who only has three months to live. It was well written, right? After that, the voice actors record the voice over based on the scenario, and then the video editing process begins. Kelly is the one doing that work. It's quite a tough job, you know? Well, uh... I don't know if it's difficult for you to understand, but there's a job called video editing, and that's Kelly's job. Maybe you were eavesdropping on the exquisite part where she was watching the video to make sure that everything is in good order. You mistakenly thought it was Kelly who was told about her life expectancy. If you had checked on the spot, this wouldn't have happened. What did you say? That's why, Mom. We're going to cut ties with you to protect our lives. Cut ties with me? Why are you suddenly talking like that? I haven't done anything wrong, have I? It's not so sudden for me. You know why I didn't work in my room at home when I was single. You said it was because you couldn't concentrate at home since you're sensitive, right? I was being nice not to tell you, but the truth is that I couldn't concentrate because you would get in my way. What? Me? No way! That's... Mom, 
No matter how much I say I'm working, you kept coming to my room and talk to me. When I'm writing a scenario, any noise interferes with my work. I can't tell you how many times I've lost my concentration because of you, mom. If I lose my concentration every single time, I get extra tired and I can't write anything good. It interferes with my work. So I solved the problem by renting an apartment for work and commuting there. I got used to this style, so even after I got married, I selfishly asked Kelly to let me go to the apartment and do my writing as usual. Now you are interrupting Kelly while she's working at home. Do you know how stressful that is? Well, I was just... I thought she was just a housewife. I explained about Kelly's job to you before we got married, right? I don't think you understood me well enough. I just thought she quit when you two got married because that's what people usually do, right? I have to ask her to prioritize the house chores. I told you she'll continue working even after marriage and she doesn't need to prioritize the house chores. And you're clearly bullying my wife. Even if you misunderstood that she only had a few months to live, you're giving her a hard time. Well, uh, that, that's, that's not true. It's a misunderstanding. I mean, a mistake. Anyway, I'm disappointed at you for hurting someone I care about. Besides, you're messing up our lives and our business. So please stay out of our lives. I don't want you messing up our lives anymore. No! Wait! Listen to me, Eddie. Then what am I supposed to do now? I'm already divorced from your father. Are you going to abandon your mother who has to live alone at home? You don't have to live alone. If you're lonely in the future, I can help you to enter a nursery home or at least help you with the paperwork. Are you kidding me? If you don't want to live with strangers, you could always go back to the countryside where your uncle or aunt lives. You're still young enough to work, and if you don't like my suggestion, you can handle everything by yourself. I can't take care of you anymore. I'm sorry, but I don't want to do either of those things. And don't call me pretending that it's urgent, okay? If you have to, go through your aunt or uncle. Well... I'm going to cut ties with you, so I'll never see you again. You have to be strong on your own. No! Please don't do that to me! I don't want that! Eddie, don't leave me alone! Farewell, Mom. At first, we were just going to move into a slightly larger apartment that we liked. But after Eddie found out that his mother started to bully me, after she misunderstood that I was dying, his anger finally exploded. He decided that we should move to a new house that he had rented in advance, and then he declared about cutting ties with his mother. With a deep sigh of relief, he muttered that it was the right decision to move to a distant place. My mother-in-law, who was left behind, spent some time trying to get in touch with Eddie and crying for help to all her relatives. Finally, Eddie's uncle, who is Lavender's younger brother, urged her to return to her hometown. However, this time, the same thing seemed to repeat itself. She was caught snubbing at his nephew's wife, who was living with him, and had to be kicked out of the house after less than a month of living together. She is now living a lonely life in a shabby apartment at a nearby town. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time!